Hi guys, it's me, Michelle, the Igniter Teacher from FuelGreatMinds.com. Today I want to share with you um, my fraction concept using color tiles. A lot of teachers ask me how do I um, introduce um, fractions to my students. Um, I also have sold one of my products on my website using color tiles. So I want to give you a, just a little introduction. I'm going to be doing a series of um, videos on fractional concepts um, because I think it's important. Fractions um, are basically the introduction to algebraic concepts and a lot of students struggle in middle school math because they don't understand fraction concepts. So let's get started. When I normally enter, the way that I normally introduce a lesson with fraction concepts, I start real basic. One of the things that I notice with students is that they don't understand um, part to whole relationships. They understand, okay, if I have one blue color tile out of four is one fourth. But they don't really understand that each part is one fourth of a whole, which gives us the total, which is four fourths. And I like the way that Common Core breaks down the fractional concept because it makes teachers teach the unit fraction. So the students know that one red tile is one fourth, then I have two fourths, three fourths, and four fourths is one whole. Also, it helps the students to understand how to add fractions, and you don't have to really use or teach kids fractions or how to add fractions um, in isolation. When you teach the unit fraction, the kids automatically understand that I'm talking about one fourth, two fourths. We're not adding that denominator, which is a common misconception for a lot of your struggling learners. Well, I start with this and the kids understand that, okay, I have four fourths. Each tile represents the unit fraction. One fourth, one fourth, two fourths, one fourth, three fourths, and four fourths is one whole. Well, we'll go ahead and replace the one red color tile with a blue color tile. And the kids automatically understand that, okay, one fourth of the color tiles are blue. But in second or third grade, they say, how many are not blue? So that throws the kids for a loop because they haven't had really any um, concrete work with fractions and understand, okay, if one fourth is blue, then how many are not blue? Well, when you look at this concrete model, you can see that one fourth is blue, but if each red tile represents one fourth of the whole, then I know that I have one fourth, two fourths, three fourths are not blue. And this is a huge deal. I know it seems very simple um, for adults, but for children, it is very important that they understand this. Also, it teaching this way leads to fractions, fractional parts of a set. So, um, fractional parts of a set are very important because when they get to fourth and fifth grade, the students start to simplify fractions. And when you simplify fractions, you're using um, division to simplify that fraction. And if you, if children can understand that fractional parts of a set, so if I have two blue and I have four in all, what fractional part of the set is blue? So you can say that one half of the set is blue. And this is monumental and huge for kids to understand because like I said, in that, um, in when they move on to fourth grade, it becomes a huge deal. So say for instance, I have five color tiles. What fractional part of the set is blue? So they could say that one 
well two fifths of the frac the set is blue and three fifths of the set is not blue. Okay, so we're talking about fractional parts of a set. When you're introducing fractional parts of a set, you have to be careful um, not to uh, inadvertently create misconceptions. Um, so try not to keep your fractions or sets in a straight row because the kids without you saying it you're saying that okay they're always going to be in a straight row and that's not necessarily true so you have the children you can put them in a plastic bag and have the kids pour them out and then organize them oops i lost one of my and have them organize them and they'll naturally put them in a row, which they need to understand that that's something that they have to do. And it's not going to always be like that. So the idea is to start with um, things that are alike and then progressively move on to things that are different. So, for example, I have a total of five objects, but what fractional part of the set are two colored counters. Well, three fifths of the set are two colored counters. Then you could ask the question, well, what fractional part of the set are squares? Well, some kids may say, well, because they're different colors. No, but the question asks, what fractional part of the set or squares. So you could say two fifths of the fractional part of squares. And it has to be reasonable. And that's where that comes in. Like a lot of my fifth graders, they don't even understand that, you know, about reasonable. Is it reasonable? Well, it has to be reasonable because if three fifths are two color counters and two fifths of square, three plus Two, three fifths plus two fifths equals five fifths. So it's reasonable because we know that three plus two equals five and we have a total of five. Um, another question that you could ask, well, what fractional part of the set is blue? Well, one fifth is blue. What fractional part of the set is red? Well, one fifth is red and vice versa. Well, you could say, and also another question that you could ask what is what fractional part of the set are not two color counters? Well, two fifths. And it's just different ways to get the kids to think about fractions. This is very, very important for students in second and third grade. Because what happens is when the students go to fifth grade, they struggle with this basic concept because they haven't had a lot of work um, and concrete models. Um, I suggest, I know that Common Core is pushing the area model, but before you give the kids an area model, and if a lot of you all don't understand, the area model is this. And you may have some shaded. Um, before you give the children this, please, please, please um, give them some fractional uh, models that have nothing to do with this. Because what the children are having to do is transfer and apply what they know about um, fractions and the role of the denominator to this area model. And also, when the kids are in fourth and fifth grade, they're using the area model to generate and simplify fractions. And the area model is a very, very high capacity model. It is the last model that I use um, with my students. I tell a lot of the second and third grade teachers, do not use the area model as your first resort because the students will definitely, definitely get confused because they haven't had any work with concrete models or sorting and identify 
identifying um, fractional parts of a set or fractional parts of anything. If they haven't had this work, this is going to be pointless, especially if your kids are struggling with fractions um, and are struggling math students. Your English language learners will definitely have a problem transferring what they know to an area model because of the language barrier. So that's all I have for you all today. I hope you enjoyed my video. Um, if you have any questions, please, please leave um, your question in the comments below. And you can always find me at www.fuelgreatminds.com. Thank you.